Hi, my name's Ian Harper and I'm the author of the Ciceroan guidebook, Walking the Cape Roth Trail. Welcome to a new series of video guides to help you plan and prepare for an expedition on what's been described as Britain's toughest trail. The Cape Roth Trail is not a route that eases you in gently. You'll quickly find yourself deep in some of the remotest and roughest areas of Scotland. The terrain and the time it can take to cover relatively short distances often catches people out. So take this first section steadily. The route of the first day follows the road south along the shores of Loch Linney before turning inland up Kona Glen. From Kona Glen, the path turns north and climbs over the shoulder of Miao Na Katei before descending to the Glenfinnan Monument that guards the northern end of the serpentine Loch Shiel. The route to Glenfinnan is quite forgiving, but at just over 21 miles, by no means easy. Most of the walking is long road or good estate paths though, and the climbing is gradual. So for that reason, I've rated this first day as moderate. As long as you're in reasonably good shape, it should take you between eight and 10 hours to get to Glenfinnan. The start of any great adventure needs a sense of theater and the ferry from Fort William to Kamusnagal certainly provides it. As you head towards the hills of the Ardgore Peninsula and alight at the pier at Kamusnagal, you've already made a firm step away from civilization. Despite being so close to Fort William, the Ardgore Peninsula feels immediately remote and cut off and you can't help but feel slightly nervous as you strike off on the first steps of this epic journey. And counterintuitively, you start your journey to the most northwesterly point of Scotland by heading almost due south. Every couple of hours from Monday to Saturday, the rusty ferry boat slips out from Fort Williams Pier onto the dark waters of Loch Linney, leaving behind the cars bustling along the Lochside Road. On alighting at the pier at Kamusnagal, you'll turn south and follow the A861 road. The walking here is easy and the road is quiet, so it's an ideal opportunity to adjust to life with a heavy rucksack and deal with any equipment adjustments. The road crosses a number of small burns and some are individually signposted with their grid references, so you can tick these off as you progress along the road. You'll cross the bridge at Strong Shregan and continue to follow the road along the shores for another three kilometers before turning inland and climbing slightly before dropping down to Inverscaddle Bay. The rhododendrons flanking the road signal arrival at the Kona Glen estate. Shortly after passing the second entrance to Kona Glen House, branch right onto a good surface track signposted for Inverscaddle. You'll pass a few houses before branching left as the path follows the River Kona into the glen. The going is easy here along good 4x4 tracks. After 7 kilometers or so, you'll pass the estate bothy at Coralach. Although the bothy is usually locked, the adjacent lean-to can be handy, a handy shelter for a brew or lunch in bad weather. The 4x4 track has now been extended almost all the way up Kona Glen, so you should have no difficulties with either the terrain or route finding. As you climb gently to the head of the glen, look out for a fork uphill to a path junction. Turn right here to ascend to the Bielach below Mial Nan Dam. This should be hard to miss, but in very low visibility, a compass bearing is always a good idea. From the Bielach, you begin the long descent towards Glenfinnan. The ground here can be a bit boggy after bad weather, but the path is clear and navigation shouldn't offer too many challenges. You'll descend gradually to a vehicle track above the Alt Nakuesh burn, 
Turn left here and follow the path downhill as it passes the buildings at Callop and enters forestry by a bridge. Don't cross the bridge, instead turn left, past the car park and continue along the vehicle track through the woods above the Callop River. Just after a disused quarry, take the wooden boardwalk heading off to the right next to an information board. This leads to a footbridge followed by a short stretch of path below the A830 before emerging onto pavement by the visitor centre next to the Glenfinnan Monument. The monument and its location is truly impressive. It was erected in 1815 to mark the place where Bonnie Prince Charlie raised his standard at the start of the final Jacobite Rising. Combined with a majestic loch shield and the Glenfinnan viaduct, you'd definitely be forgiven for shedding the rucksack and snapping a few pictures at this point. There's not a great deal in Glenfin in itself. There are no shops, but there is a train station which you could use to skip the first day if you're on a really tight time schedule. Accommodation wise, there are a couple of hotels and a few Airbnb options. The food and hospitality at the Prince's House has always been a firm favorite of mine. There's an estate bothy at Corrie Hully, which is a few kilometers up the Glen. And it's also possible to camp near here although please be discreet and considerate as Glenfinnan is an active estate. A major route alternative at the start of the Cape Roth Trail strikes off in a completely different direction and follows the Great Glen Way. On balance, it's a slightly easier start to the walk and gives access to more easterly areas than the main route, which may appeal to some people. I'll cover this alternative route in detail in a separate video, so look out for that. So. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe to the channel and leave a like and also let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes. If you head over to caperothtrail.org you'll find all the information that you need to start planning an expedition there for free as well as a new shop so if you fancy a t-shirt or a mug like this you can get one there and it all helps towards the upkeep of the website. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you soon.